Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of January 12, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is a special moment. At the end of the day, we do have a configuration to start off this week that astrologers have been talking about and looking forward to for so many years. And that, of course, is the meeting, the divine meeting of Saturn and Pluto in the sky. This happens right around Sunday, so right out of the gate as we start this week. And of course, it isn't just the fact that these two planets are meeting, although that is a really big deal. They do meet once every 40 years or so, but less often in the same sign. And for everyone who's alive right now, no matter how young, no matter where you are on that spectrum of your physical age, we will not see this again in our lifetime. Saturn and Pluto meeting in the sign of Capricorn, that is. Now these two planets getting together is very special and it does denote a shift in power and who has the power and how we understand power in a broader sense. And on the one hand, it is an ending, but it is also a beginning. So as I said, it's not just Saturn and Pluto, but we've got Mercury here. We've got the sun here. This is part of the awareness, part of uh, the sense of these lessons being very much on the surface, but also Ceres, the asteroid Ceres is here, which connects us to nurturance and connects us to a sense of what it is that we really need to be well, to be at peace, to be happy, to move through the world. These lessons are playing out in our own lives individually, but certainly for the collective as well. Now, of course, we can look at world events, lots of uh, intriguing things happening, but also a lot of very intense things happening. And I know that it can be scary. And I know that it can be painful as well. And especially when it is that you are a sensitive person, as many of us are increasingly so, it makes us that much more sensitive to our environment, to our larger world environment as well. And as challenging as that may be to experience this change in our world and this change in our communities, the uncertainty of this time, understand that ultimately this is transition. It was Carl Jung that said, all of life is a series of crisis, chaos, and calm crisis, chaos, and calm. And when it is that there is chaos, people get scared and we end up having even more in our world reflecting that fear back to us. And it's very easy to get caught up in that. And that is something that is truly sad. There are people who suffer in that. We can have compassion with that. And at the same time, we can acknowledge that we will get to a place of calm we will get to a place of ease and a place where there will be less fear. And if we look at world history, we look at world events, we look at the different phases that we go through, some shorter phases of, you know, eight years or 10 years or 12 years, and then some longer phases, right? That might take an entire Uranus cycle of 84 or so years or a Neptune cycle or more. We look at these other larger phases. Ultimately, it always leads us towards greater peace, greater prosperity for more people than ever before. Greater opportunity for more people than ever before. A greater sense of self-actualization and the ability to self-actualize. That is truly a privilege to be able to be in a space, in a community, in a society, in a country where you are able to do that, where you're able to move up Maslow's hierarchy, where you're able to move beyond just survival, ensuring that you have the basics and you actually have the privilege of considering your creative fulfillment and your higher purpose and what you're here to do and to have the freedom to go about doing that. That is a great privilege, but it is available to more people now than ever before in human history and that trend will only grow stronger from here. I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it because I get kind of emotional when I think about it, but uh, very recently 
in the last few days, uh, a Canadian a plane carrying a lot of Canadians uh, went down and was shot down. And I don't think I knew anybody personally, but it did affect me very deeply. It hit home very deeply because even though we are all one world community and we all feel a connection to each other, at the same time though, it feels that much more personal because these are my fellow Canadians who are on this plane. Uh, so many of our citizens, citizens of my country, uh, died in this. And it feels like a time when all of us can point to different things in the world that are happening right now and say, hey, those are my people and I'm seeing suffering there and I see myself in that. I don't want to see my own go through that. And the truth is we're seeing that all over the world right now in a very heightened kind of way. It is somewhat comforting that this conjunction is only going to be exact once. We are going to have this conjunction get close again as we move into the fall. And I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But at least for now, this is going to be the only exact conjunction that we are going to see in the sign of Capricorn before this energy starts to separate and it starts to move on. And so this is one of those very heightened moments in this. And so my hope is that wherever you are, you do your best with where you are and you surrender the rest. That at some point we just have to have faith. We just have to have faith in ourselves, but also in the humanity in us that is a part of everyone as well. And I do believe that it is a week like this that is going to give us that very opportunity to glimpse that very humanity, to see extraordinary compassion that affirms our equality and that affirms our connection to each other, that affirms a sense of truly being a part of a world community, of being deeply interconnected to each other. So it will be right around Monday when Venus changes signs and moves into the sign of Pisces. Now, Venus really likes being in the sign of Pisces. She's able to bring forward her very best qualities. This is where the ancients said that Venus was exalted. She's able to really uh, behave in ways, bring forward the magnificence of her love more fully, a spiritual love, a higher beauty, a recognition of universal beauty, but also in a very embodied kind of way, but in a very spiritual kind of way, because ultimately it is spirit that animates matter, that makes matter come alive. And so Venus in such a very spiritual sign is able to come most alive when she is here in the sign of Pisces. And as we move right into the middle of the week, right on Wednesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, that is when Venus will reach out in harmony with Uranus. And this to me is that energy of new ideas, bringing beauty, bringing harmony, bringing peace, bringing a real sense of compassion for ourselves and for each other. It is that sense of us feeling as if we are stepping into a future of greater love happening at this time. Now, it may be a very personal experience happening here, but there is a shift. There is a change. There is a transition happening. And it is ultimately this sense of things shifting and changing and transitioning that leads us in a direction that feels that much more certain that eventually in the fullness of time, it is the love that brings that sense of certainty and that sense of stability. In times of an awareness of the chaos, it is ultimately heart that keeps us connected to the humanity that defines us. We are living in times where we are realizing and we're seeing that there are people who actually gain from pain. I think that's part of what we're seeing with Saturn conjunct Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, that that is something that is a dynamic that plays out in the world. But I think that it takes true creativity. It takes 
humanity, really, to find ways to create prosperity for oneself or for others or with others through peace and through harmony. But it's possible. It can be done. And we've had lots and lots of examples and experiences in our own lives, personally on perhaps a smaller scale, but also on a more collective scale as well. And so it is this connection that Venus will make with Uranus that will invite us to be creative, to summon the creativity that compassion asks us to. And to understand that ultimately it is by raising the energy within our own selves, in our own bodies, in our own lives, in our own spirits, that ultimately we can then be more open to ways in which we can be conduits for that love, that peace, that compassion, that unity that we hold as higher values. I think that it has always been the case as far as you know, the world that we've created together and what it is that we understand about what it means to be human is that we have what Freud called the self-destruct urge, but we also have the urge to create, right? What he called the libido, which is ultimately the urge to know others, to merge with others, to create within ourselves, to know creative energy through ourselves and with others as well. That's not just a physical act, right? It's also a spiritual act. It's a, a, an act that we do when we share ideas with others and they magnify and they grow. And so we're just seeing that dichotomy in a very stark way now with what is happening in the world. But that doesn't mean that it's always this way. It's just that way right now. And it is ultimately an invitation to each of us to choose to decide that we are going to consciously and adamantly and without apology and with absolute conviction, we are going to align with love and wisdom. We are going to commit to the path of love and wisdom. And what that means is ultimately using your, our creativity, you know, using that thing that animates us, that makes us human, that, that great privilege that we have to self-actualize to actually do something good in the world, to put good energy into the world, to put love in the world, to put wisdom in the world in our own unique ways. And there are literally as many ways to do that as there are human beings right now. There are infinite ways in which you can be a presence of love and wisdom right where you are. So how about this? With all the compassion energy, start with yourself. Just start with sitting with yourself and choosing that you're not going to attack you, right? You're not going to be brutal to you, but instead you're going to be kind. You're going to be loving. You're going to speak to yourself in a loving way. And there's a difference between speaking your, to yourself in a way that's egotistical, that comes from insecurity and speaking to yourself from love, from a place of recognizing that we all are an amplification and an embodiment of that love. To do so from a place of humility, but also a confident humility at that, knowing that it is right for us to feel love for ourselves, to choose not to go down that path where we start to access that other energy, that energy that ultimately, and sadly, we're seeing a little bit too much of or a lot too much of in our world today an energy of fear, an energy of separation. It's not helping. <laughs> That's the truth. It's addictive. You're in the moment. You're feeling it. It gives you a rush. It makes you feel like you're right. But it's not helping anybody. It's not helping you as part of your journey through your life and making your life better, making your life more peaceful. So I do believe that it is and will be Venus sextile Uranus that is going to be the saving grace now that is going to help us immensely. Now, as we navigate late into the week, right around Thursday is when Mercury will change signs, move into the sign of Aquarius. And at the very end of the week, we'll speak to Uranus in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. This is a conversation of tension and it's one of frustration as well. And I do think that, you know, 
Uranus is the ruling planet of Aquarius. Uh, this energy is of truth and of information uh, that may surprise us. For some, it may shock us. Um, but I do feel that this is going to be, if you didn't think it was possible, uh, new ways to understand how people are using the internet and a, a very stark light being shed on that. How is it that the masses are being reached? Uh, how is it that information is being uh, disseminated? And how do we feel about that? Where is our individuality and our individual expression in the middle of that as well? There may be some tension around some of these ideas and some of these thoughts, um, but that may show up ultimately because Mercury is so fast moving. It does look like this is a moment that kind of pops up and gets our attention, but it is ultimately a quick moving energy and so wherever it is that you're feeling as if you may be getting information that isn't necessarily comfortable well you'll find a way to navigate it and it'll be fine in our own personal journeys it just might make for an interesting and unusual story at that what i love about this week for us well look it has to be venus connecting with uranus that is the big saving grace now the beautiful energy that is on offer now in the middle of the week. It'll give us just the respite we need, the reminder that we need to keep compassion and empathy and love for ourselves and for each other at the forefront. It is ultimately, as we are starting this week and Saturn is meeting Pluto in the sky, this is truly a defining moment for humanity, but it's not a moment, it's not like, Mercury and Uranus, right? That connection happens about twice a year. It comes and it goes really quickly. This is one that has a way of sticking around. It has a way of developing uh, and of continuing to, to culminate, not just now, but in the months ahead, in the years ahead. So it is gonna be important to pay attention, to watch how it is that things are coming together. Yes, personally, certainly but for the collective as well. And I do think that if you set the intention to choose to see how it is that ultimately we are, as part of the greater mystery, moving towards the embodiment of greater love and greater wisdom for more and more people in more and more ways than ever before, well, chances are we'll see evidence of it all around us. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you wanna know how all these aspects this week, all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And you may be able to tell I'm in a hotel room right about now, and I uh, am in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I had such an amazing time. Thank you so much for hosting me, NCGR of South Florida. I really did love meeting Floridians out here. It was just so very lovely. I was so very welcome. So thank you so much for being there for my book launch party, for my talk, and for my workshop. It is going to be tomorrow that I will jump on a boat and I will be on a cruise. I'll be in the middle of the cruise next week's horoscope. Uh, I will record that somewhere on the cruise. I don't know where, I don't even know how, but somehow I will do it and I will get it up on YouTube and I hope that you love that. So I'm looking forward to being connected with you and I'll be sharing all of that on Instagram as well uh, very quickly. I've got lots of amazing talks coming up. Next week, I will be, not this week, but the following week, I am going to be in New York City I've got a few amazing events that are coming up, but really the big event that's almost sold out right now, I think it's at about 85% last time I checked, is uh, the talk that I will be doing at the New York Theosophical Society. It is such a high for me, really. I just feel so much joy, so much gratitude uh, to be speaking, to be hosted by Gotham Astrology. And I'll have links to all of that in the description below, so you can click on that. The Ever Eventbrite link is there, so you can click on that to secure your ticket now. I think there are just a very small handful, maybe I think three or four 
early bird tickets still left, which are at a huge discount, only $20 each. Uh, and so you, you can click on the links below and learn more about that. If you're anywhere in the tri-state area, I would love to meet you. Uh, and of course, keep in touch on my Instagram as well. I'll be sharing even more information. Uh, I'm going to be part of a panel uh, in New York City during the same week of other world-renowned astrologers hosted by the Astro Twins. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So again, keep in touch with me on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. It is going to be uh, not next weekend, but the weekend after in two weeks, the next session of Synchronicity University starts. I'm going to be on a world tour coming up in March and April and May. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. And of course, my books, The Body and the Cosmos, uh, right now is available widely on Amazon and on booksellers everywhere. If it is that you would like a signed copy, you can order that on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And my next book, Prayers to the Sky, I'll let you know when that's coming out and when advanced sales are available and all of that. Stay in touch with me. Uh, I would love to connect with you on social media. And with that, because I am on the road, I am going to keep announcements short um, and also because I'm just feeling overall a lot of love, a lot of gratitude and a lot of love and gratitude for you as well. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of my sacred journey, for seeing me as some part of yours. Thank you again, Florida, for giving me a truly incredible and amazing and memorable experience that I absolutely loved and meant so much to me. It truly did mean so much to me. And thank you. Just thank you for all of it. And I hope that you guys navigate this time well, this conjunction of Saturn and of Pluto. It is powerful. It's stirring a lot within us. Um, and ultimately it is that that is a reminder of transformation and of change and it is an invitation inviting us to transform and change in ways that ultimately allow us to embody love and wisdom more than we did before that is our choice that is our journey certainly but to take that journey consciously that is the choice that we are being presented with now and thankfully more and more of us are constantly choosing and for that i'm so very hopeful and i'm so very grateful as well well thank you again for watching it'll be a great week enjoy